Can you tell us <laughs> about how Chinake um, creates pathways for Black classical musicians? The pathways are providing opportunities for performance, for being mentored, for walking onto platforms where they've previously never had the opportunity or invitation to do so. And I'm not just talking about the practitioners of music. I'm talking about the composers, the living composers, as well as those who've gone before us. Also the conductor. That's absolutely crucial as well. That person waving the stick, this whole hierarchy thing. We're all equal, right? Mm. And I want to break down those hierarchy habits within the Chineke Orchestra. When those doors open, the entire orchestra files on to the stage. Nobody sits down. The conductor, I remember saying it, conductor, you're coming on with us. We're coming mm -hmm. on together as one. When they know that everyone's on the stage, they lead the bow and everybody bows. The audience is clapping for you, for you, for you. The first time the audience sees us is as one. And then they hear music first. We're all tuned and ready to go. Would you mind sharing some highlights of recent um, successes or victories over the um, course of your organization's work? Yes, I mean, we had yet another BBC prom this year. So we've had seven proms in nine years, which is pretty unheard of for a new orchestra, you know, because yeah. all the orchestras across the world fight to get a BBC prom. We also revisited the Lucerne Festival, which is one of the biggest festivals in, in Europe. And in 2022, our junior orchestra opened that festival. And a month later, the Chinike Professional Orchestra closed the festival. And in between the Chinika Juniors and the Chinika Professional Orchestra, there was the Philadelphia Orchestra, the Cleveland, the LSO, the Berlin Phil. You know. So we sandwiched all those leading orchestras across the world. So what are sort of some of the current needs uh, for your organization and how can folks get involved? A big need for the operations team, for the team that, you know, the, that motors this organization is to have a fantastic managing director. It's an equal position to me, but I'm the artistic director. I need someone as managing director to drive the whole operations team and let me get on with the stuff that I'm good at. What can we look forward to for Jenica's 10 year anniversary next year? Oh, all sorts of things. Well, we've got lots of nice album releases to come out. We've just um, started an assistant conductors program. We had 38 applications from across the world. I want the orchestra to choose the three assistants that we're going to have for this next season that starts next week. We're opening our very first concert in January, our beginning of our 10th anniversary year, playing pieces that have been written for Chinake specifically. And it's so an incredible legacy. It's a, the amazing footprint of what Chinake has been doing. Yeah, yeah. And the, the warmth amongst the players, the, you know, our principal timpanist, for example, his principal timpani with the Royal Scottish National Orchestra, only black player in that orchestra. And he says to me, Chichi, I do all these amazing concerts with th those orchestras, but the most important concerts I do are the Chinake concerts. You know, just for morally, emotionally, my sense of self, all of those things that I need, it feeds another part of my soul. And we all need, everyone needs a bit of Chinake, even our white friends, they just need it and they love it when they come. Absolutely. Chichi, thank you so much for meeting with us today. It was such a joy to talk to you about your organization and how much work you've been doing for Black communities around the globe. Thank you. And uh, we onward. We go. Yes, absolutely. Onwards. We keep going. <laughs> yes. That's the only answer to it. Keep going and bring our brothers and sisters with us. <laughs>